compound annual growth rate is a popular measure in the business world. What it's trying to work out or to tell us is how does a number turn from let's say sales of 10 million in year one to 17.5 million in year four? What is the compound annual growth rate? So what single percentage growth rate will turn 10 million into 17 and a half million in those years? There's a couple of ways to do it. Unfortunately, there is no Kagar formula in Excel. So the first way we can look at is how we can goal seek it. And it provides a proof as well that we are getting it correct. So what you'll see here is I've created a little bucket. So this is the end of year. So you'll see I've made that my closing balance. There's my opening balance. I've then seen it's going to grow by whatever that opening balance is times by our growth which is currently 0% and then that will add up. So we know what we want to know is what single number here will turn a closing balance of 10 million into a closing balance of the 17.5 million. So we're going to make use of our goal seek and we're going to ask Excel please make that cell over there equal to 17.5 million by changing this cell over here. So when I say OK, you'll see it runs through, eventually gets a solution, and it tells us that if it uses 20.51% each year, that will grow from 10 million to 17.5 million. It's important to realize that what this is doing is not matching these middle years. You'll see that it's suggesting we're going to be at 12.05 million, we're actually at 12.5. Here it's 14.5, but it's actually 15. The important thing is what single number will grow from this point to that point consistently. And that's what KGO is. So you can use this to goal seek what the KGO is. Another way to calculate KGAR is to use the rate function because the rate function, which is normally used when we're doing debt calculations, is trying to work out what interest rate has a compounding effect on a set of numbers. So I'm going to go and find the rate function. Now there's a couple of things you've got to be careful of with the rate function when you're using it for KGAR. Firstly, the number of periods is important. As you'll see, we've got four years here. But the reality is this is the end of the year. So actually, from a compounding point of view, we actually only have one, two, three. So I'm going to put a three in here. The payment's irrelevant, because what we're saying is how are we going to get from 10 million to 17 and a half million, and there's nothing happening in between. We don't assume anything, so we'll leave it blank. The PV, we're going to do the starting value, so we'll use our 10 million. The FV, we're going to use our end value. But we have to be careful here because as a rule of thumb, the PV and the FV should have different signs. Remember for a debt point of view, what we're saying is if we take out 10 million, we have to pay back 17.5 million. What's the growth rate? So here we just need to make one of them negative, so I'm going to make the PV negative. So now what we're asking Excel is tell me how you could get from minus 10 million in three years to 17 and a half million with no payments in between. Type, we're going to just use, put a zero there. When I say OK, you'll see it gives me 20.51%. And as, we've sh as we show here, this 20.51% would then take a number like 10 million. And by growing it each year and compounding it, get us to the 17.5 million. We can use the IRR function to calculate a KGAR. If you think about what KGAR is doing, it's saying how do we get from 10 million to 17 and a half million? The IRR function does a similar thing. How do we make one set of cash flows equate to another set of cash flows? In this case, we're going to just have to set up some helper cells. So firstly, I'm going to have to set up 
that this equals to that number there. Now IRR does need a negative to turn into a positive. So we're going to just make that a negative cell. We do know that it has to go through these periods. So I'm going to just put some zeros here. And the only point of that is just so that Excel knows that there's two periods in between. The last one is going to be where we want to get to. So we've now set up the cash flows. We're going to ask Excel what percentage compounded will take 10 million and turn it into 17 and a half million. So we can use the IRR function and you'll see we just highlight values. When I say OK, it gives you 20.51%. So what that's telling you is that if you, and we've got the proof here, if we had 10 million here and we grew it at 20.51%, that same growth percentage on the opening balance will turn into 17 and a half million. We can use the XRR function to work it out our KGAR. We just have to set up some cells just to help Excel out. So what we know is we want to turn 10 million into 17 and a half million. Now for IRR or XIRR, you cannot have two positive numbers. There has to at least be one negative, one positive. So I'm going to just make that one a negative. And because we're going to use the XIRR function, we need to give it dates. So I'm going to say this 10 million is going to be at that date. And this 17 million is going to be at that date. Now that we've set it up and we've got our cells, what we now can do is we can use the XRR function. Tell it where the values is, those two there. Tell it where the dates are, those two there. And when I say OK, you'll see it gives me 20.49%. Now this is slightly different from our other KGARs. And that's because this is a lot more accurate in the sense that it's working out exactly the number of days in these periods. Whereas our other KGARs, which we can prove here, are working out on just single years. In order to prove this one, we'd then have to work out exactly the number of days per year. But XIRR is a very good way of showing how we can take one number and convert it into another number. And just by entering the dates between those two numbers, we'll get an accurate reflection of what the compound annual growth rate needs to be.